Уважаемые коллеги, добрый день. Мы рады всех приветствовать, начиная наше мероприятие. Хочу поблагодарить всех, кто пришли к нам. Хочу поблагодарить своих коллег, всех, кто помогал мне организовывать это мероприятие. Отдельно буду благодарить Федора Вирина за его помощь и партнерство. Хочу напомнить, что язык нашего мероприятия английский. Я старалась об этом каждого предупредить лично. После презентации Диджес может ответить на ваши вопросы. Вопросы, если есть какие-то заранее, к нему можно передавать вам сюда, чтобы сразу на них начать отвечать после презентации. Все, спасибо большое. Я передаю микрофон коллегам. Спасибо большое. So we are, uh, I think we now are switching to English. Uh, so that's sort of like a bad, my bad English is a good <laughs> preclusion for <laughs> a step to the Diggis. So we're actually very happy to have uh, to have DJ here, and um, it's interesting uh, that I didn't know about it, but next to us uh, there is this party by the tax authority guys, and <laughs> I think it's an interesting combination of the traditional Russian economy, like the tax guys, the corruption guys, the oil guys, or whatever else guys, uh, and the guys we have here in this room, uh, because I think we got people from uh, different companies who all share uh, one very interesting thing in common with the people who work on in what you can broadly call uh, innovation type economy or modern economy and so these are people who are facing with uh, a lot of technical innovation and analytical challenges and those are i think very similar to challenges that people in the silicon valley face and so uh, i think uh, what uh, dj can tell us uh, can be extremely useful and extremely interesting uh, just a few words about our speaker today so Uh, DJ started his career uh, as actually a scientist, and he uh, was a scientist, traveling scientist, doing uh, quite a few projects, not only in the U.S. but abroad. He's been to Il such places like Iraq. He's also been to actually to quite a few former Soviet republics, uh, to Georgia, to Central Asia. So he's not completely unfamiliar with uh, our landscape generally. But I think this first or one of the first visits, this is the first visit, the first visit to Russia, first visit to Moscow. Uh, he then moved on to work in, at eBay. He was on, uh, on the architecture team, one of the senior architects at eBay, so quite familiar with some of the technical challenges there, uh, growing a massive platform. Uh, he then moved on to LinkedIn, uh, where he was basically orchestrating the transfer of LinkedIn to a data-driven organization. He was uh, chief scientist, uh, chief analytics guy, chief security guy, I think, at LinkedIn, all those uh, things. Uh, He then moved on uh, to a fancy scene called Color, uh, one of the high-profile uh, startups that were launching early this year, uh, doing, uh, doing product work there. Uh, so it's a very uh, rich evolution, I would say. So uh, I think one of the great thing and interesting things about TJ is that he had exposure to uh, tremendously, tremendously uh, high potential teams, technology teams, data teams, product teams in uh, the leading companies. Uh, so, welcome, and thanks for, having, for being here. Is this on? All right. Great. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I think the, the first thing that I would say is, uh, for this type of presentation, what's more useful is if we, wow, they, I guess they, they think we're going to have a different type of lecture. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's more useful to actually have a dialogue and uh, a conversation. And for, for two particular reasons. The, the first is, uh, in case you don't understand my English, because it does, that doesn't mean that your understanding of English is poor, it just means my ability to speak as a Westerner is not very good. <laughs> and the second is, uh, this is data. And one of the things that is very, very clear when you talk to data, about data in different, not only type of companies, but different institutions, different industries, different countries, is there's many different ways to talk about the same thing. We don't have a, a very same way of talking about it, a similar nomenclology. nomenclogy. And so because of that, if you have a question, ask. If you see something that you actually say, hey, you disagree with, even better, bring it up. Uh, I think it actually will benefit all of us. So that we should think of this as much more of a discussion rather than some form of uh, an academic lecture here in this, uh, this kind of room. So with that, let me get started. This is, a, uh, this is what I call data jujitsu. It's the art of turning data into product. 
And I'll talk a little bit more about this philosophy of what we call data jujitsu. But the real emphasis here is, is how do we actually think about data? It's not just some back-end process, but it's actually a product. And a product not just for internal users, but external users as well. So the first thing, what is this term data science? How many people have heard this term data science right now? Only one person. Nobody else has heard this term data science? Wow, okay, so this term is now the term that people are starting to refer to as analytics people, or, or data scientists, data science. And so what I think is most appropriate is to actually think of it as what is, what are these type of, what is data science? And I would say it's a data, it's better to think about it as a type of organizations. What are the organizations that do this really well? And the organizations that do it well are the ones that acquire, process, and leverage data in a timely way to create efficiencies, to iterate on and develop new products. And then most important of all, to navigate a competitive landscape. And for this last one is critical for us, especially in Silicon Valley, where it is an extraordinarily competitive landscape. The number of companies that are coming out every single day is very, very rapid. The user base, you're competing for time of users. And so you're very ha you have to have a very fast iteration cycle to learn from what is working, what's not working, and to change your product and your business. So the first thing that this goes is, we're entering this new incredible phase. It is cheaper and easier to do analytics than ever before. And to, to exemplify that, this is, this is uh, my, one of my favorite graphs. Anybody know who that is? It's, it's, it's Captain Kirk from the show Star Trek, and this is one of the movies. The, the, the great thing is the US humor about this is you can tell by the demographics of who knows this because either you know him as a guy in Star Trek or you know him as this guy that appears on all these US commercials. And the point of this is there's a scene in the movie where he's really angry and he sits there and says, Khan! And it's this kind of long, melodramatic scene where he looks like that. And so what somebody did this is from a comic called XKCD is they did this Google search and they wanted to see what's the histogram breakdown of the number of A's in Khan. So this is somewhat trivial, right? But think about it. If you were, if somebody came to you, your product guy or somebody engineer said, hey, you know what? We need to actually be able to do this analysis. They say, well, first we need to acquire the data, then we need to do an ETL, and then we got to create the schema, and then we need to put it in the database, and then we got to, what, well, what SQL are we going to use? Are we going to use Postgres or something else? Or, well, maybe we should put it in Hadoop. And then finally, you're going to do this. And maybe you do a project plan that's going to take you six months. Instead, nowadays, this is my typical, one of my typical interview questions. As I say, OK, I want you to find the number of A's and they give me the distribution uh, in con using Google. And just write a quick Python script that's going to go get this result. How fast can you do it? And now that's the beauty of it. So very quickly, you can do this analysis. And what's amazing about this analysis is there is somebody out there on the web that has written con with 100 A's. But not one person. 100 people. So somebody out there has, a, has all this time to put 100 A's in con, right, as different pages. And you can see all this sort of interesting thing is there's all these interesting distributions. So yes, a somewhat silly analysis, but still can be done A, in record time, and B, can show you can some surprising things about the data. And that kind of exemplifies some of this, this new world that we're entering with. So how much demand is there for these data scientists? So how many people here think of themselves as data people? How many people don't know how to raise their hands? <laughs> no, okay, so we only got one data guy? Come on. Is, or is everyone just showed up here because it was like free food? Is that <laughs> You're actually waiting for the tax guy? <laughs> no, so for those of you that think of yourselves as data, great. For those of you that don't think of yourselves as data, you should probably become, think about becoming one. Why? So here is the, essentially what the demand of is for data people. This is over time. This is actually using data from LinkedIn. And what you can see here is in the 70s, we got all this, this, this kind of pretty much the sub demand going on here. It flattens out and starts to take off. Anybody have an idea what's happening in the 70s? It happened for both. both not, it's not just US data. This is international data. What was going on in the 70s? Space race. So a lot of people using big mainframes, doing a lot of analysis that way. Kind of go to the 80s, and what's happening here? We have this new wave of analytics. 
So that's good news. We're in demand. People want to know this. But this graph only ends in about 2007. So what does it look like today? That's the updated graph. That's the demand. That's the demand for data scientists. So if you're not a data scientist today, you should think about becoming one. <laughs> That's the message. It actually is in the top three most in demand fields currently. Data scientists, engineers, web developers, or designers and web developers. So let's talk a little bit about this philosophy of data science that I think is really important for how to, how to basically break data problems up so that they're solvable. And the way to think about it is this definition of jujitsu. Anybody here do jujitsu? <laughs> right? There's some people actually do jujitsu? All right, so I can't make things up now. Uh, so for the, since you know this, jujitsu is about this art of softness. It's about taking your opponent's strength, their momentum, their energy, and using it against themselves. And so we want to do very similar things with data. And so the way to think about this, this is sort of the form of the academic way we, we came up with it, which is using multiple data elements in clever ways to solve iterative or auxiliary data problems when combined solve a data problem that might otherwise be intractable. So what does that mean? Let's give it, it's better to give an example of that. So an example of that would be to look at this profile. So this is a LinkedIn profile. This is Jay Kreps, the inventor of Voldemort. So up there at the top you see his name, there's uh, something about his, uh, his title, his position, a posting that he's currently done, more information about where he's gone, his education, his uh, websites that, that, he's, uh, that he listed, summary of what he does, books he's read, events he's going to, and more details about his career experience. So here's the question. Here's the job. We need to build a recommendation engine for events. We need to tell the users what events they should go to. And we need to do it in, oh, let's give ourselves a fair amount of time. Let's say 96 hours. 96 hours to build an event recommendation system that we are going to put on the home page of LinkedIn. How would we do it? Just using this data here. Who's got an idea? Random way and uh, <laughs> how users uh, uh, click on this post. Just kind of a random one? Okay, that could be one way. Who else? Great keywords. Keywords, okay. Say more. Well, we actually have, uh, we actually have an industry. Uh, this guy is uh, Ian, yeah. Yeah. Based on. Uh, Actually, we, I don't know if we have uh, the topic of uh, the books here he, he, he read. Uh, like, is, is it, are these IT books or are these are books or whatever? So we could form this keywords someone mentioned. Yeah, there you go. Now we're getting somewhere. Look at keywords, right? Also, got some ideas. The profiles he visits. Profiles he visits. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Good. Search history. Search history. Another good one. Similar demographics or similar demographics. Similar demographics, okay. Great. So these are all sort of along the right way. So here's the first cut fastest way, one of the fastest ways to do it. Books all have a code associated with it, which is typically called the ISBN number. The ISBN number are used for tagging books for libraries. So you get an automatic bag bag of words. Conferences have the exact same type of system. And so you can put the, get that list, you can marry it up. Now, you can just post that up very quickly and get a test if, if this is interesting or not. Now here's where this starts to go wrong. Because what's the book that most people read? It's popular books. It's books about vampires. It's books about Harry Potter. And so all of a sudden you're showing these kind of books that are useful. 